Welcome back to the bench. This is part two of the video series where we looked at how the emitter resistor in the transistor circuit improved the performance of that circuit at the cost of gain due to the local negative feedback it provided. And in this video we're going to look at the similar thing using a vacuum tube. And in this case it will be the cathode resistor. We'll see how it benefits the performance of the tube, reducing distortion and things like that. It also has an additional purpose of helping us bias the tube and we'll explore that as well. Here is the schematic of the circuit I will be using. I had to set up a power supply for this. I needed 150 volts isolated from the mains. And this is the actual circuit itself. We have a 100K plate resistor and some output and input coupling capacitors. This here we'll be using for bias. I'm not using cathode bias yet. We'll talk about that later because I need this when the cathode is connected directly to ground. I'm using a 12AU7 tube. Now I don't suspect we will see as dramatic effect as we did with the transistor amplifier because the transistor had a lot more gain than the 12AU7 tube does. It would have been better to have a 12AX7 tube around because it has a lot more gain. But, you know, as things work out, I don't have one, so we'll see how it goes with this 12AU7 tube. Here's the isolated power supply setup. I have this bazooka transformer here. Notice it has 12 volts AC output, 3.5 amps, which is more than enough. And the output of that feeds the 12 volt windings on this transformer here. And the 120 volt side goes into the full wave bridge through the filter caps and circuit and over to the amplifier or the uh, that little tube circuit here. I actually got these capacitors out of an old CFL and they're still good, so used them for the circuit. To light the filaments, I'm taking 12 volts off before it stepped up to 120 here. Okay, so now I'm going to power up the circuit with the cathode connected directly to ground and the grid with a zero bias voltage. In other words, this is connected to ground here. And I erase the part of this line because I'm not using any bias at this point. So with the circuit powered up, but the heater inside the tube is not powered up, the tube is not conducting at all. So the plate resistor pulls the plate all the way up to the supply rail of 152 volts. Now watch what happens when I connect up the filament. And there it goes. It's starting to drop. I can see a little orange glow in there. And look what happened. It pulled the plate voltage down. And it will stabilize at some voltage. So with zero volts on the grid, the tube is conducting and pulling the plate voltage down. Now, we want this to be a little amplifier, so the tube is actually over-biased. We want the plate voltage to be somewhere around half the supply voltage. One thing I would like to say, if you're experimenting with tubes, never try this with a high-power tube, because zero bias on the tube can actually damage the tube. It can draw too much current. But in this case, with a 100K resistor on the plate and 150 volt supply, the maximum current that could ever flow is 1.5 milliamps and the tube's rated for 20 milliamps, I believe, continuous, so no problem here. So now I'm going to plug in another 12AU7 and see if the zero bias pulls that voltage down the same amount. Alright, I plugged in another tube, another 12AU7, and it's fairly close not exactly the same and that's because the differences in the parameters. 
you know, when these are manufactured, they're not going to be the same. It's like transistors. The gains are all over the place, even though you have the same part. So now I want to bias the tube. So I've taken this end of the resistor that's connected to the grid that was connected to ground, and now I'm going to put a bias voltage on it. I connected it to my supply, so now that I can put a negative voltage on the grid relative to ground. And by the way, they call this a grid leak resistor, although that's really incorrect for the way this is being used now. But you'll hear that term thrown around. I have my bias supply hooked up. Turn it on. And I will bring up the voltage. This is the plate voltage you're looking at. This is not the bias. I will get a measurement. I want about half the supply voltage, so around 70 volts will do. Okay. So now the plate voltage has reached 70 volts. And let me turn on my meter and get a measurement. Okay, so that's a negative 3.44 volts on the grid, which is giving us our proper plate voltage we want for the circuit. So now I can move ahead and apply a signal to the grid of the tube, and we'll look at it on the scope. I've connected my preamp to the input of the tube amplifier, and I'll turn it on. The scope is connected to the plate, so we can see the plate voltage. And there you go. We're getting a nice, pretty big sine wave. That's 17 volts RMS. And that's one thing with tubes. They're high impedance, generally high voltage devices. So you can get quite a voltage swing on the output. And in fact, my scope is at its limits. I'll just flip the uh, probe here. 10x probe so that makes the signal one tenth as much let's see if that's true 23 yeah fairly close so we can see clipping so it's starting to clip clips on the top first and there's clipping on the bottom so out of clipping we're running about 40 volts RMS so let's turn that back down Let's get a gain measurement. So set this at 20 volts. 20 volts exactly. And I'll move the scope probe to the input to see what the input voltage is. Wrong position. There we go. One point four four volts. So move that back to the plate. So we had 20 volts in the output divided by 1.44. So we have a gain of 13.8, which is, yeah, it's probably in the ballpark. These tubes have a gain up to 20, depending on the supply voltage. Now let's see how the supply voltage affects the output here. So I turn that down about 25 percent and look how we lose the amplitude. I mean it's not clipping or anything it's just we lost gain. So I'll bring the supply voltage back up and it comes back to 20 volts RMS output. Okay now we'll look at distortion. So turn the FFT mode on. Clear this out. And let's turn this down. Bring this up right there. And this node, of course, is the 1% built in pilot signal. And we're getting a large second harmonic. Matter of fact, look familiar. Looks exactly like the transistor amplifier. Yeah, it was pretty clean everywhere else and it just had that big second harmonic.
So if this is 1%, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is a 6% second harmonic. That is pretty much just like our transistor. I forget the exact value, but they were about the same, I think. I think the transistor might have had a little notch of um, third harmonic, but the tube is not showing that here. Let's turn this up a little bit. No, nope, I don't see any sort of third harmonic. Well, what you should see now is how not having the cathode resistor affects the parameters. So we'll put in a cathode resistor and see how it cleans up the tube's performance. So now what I've done is add a cathode resistor. And I also removed the external biasing circuit and connected this back to ground again. So what's happening here is there's some current flowing through the tube and that current is going to cause a voltage drop across this resistor and it just so happens that 4.7 K gives the exact same voltage that I had on the bias. So now you might be thinking how do I get that negative 3.4 volts on this grid I need to properly bias this tube. If you think about it, it's the voltage on the cathode relative to the grid which biases the tube. So this is 3.4 volts. So if you flip it around in your mind, just think of this as zero volts. This would be negative 3.4 volts. And that's what we're biasing on the tube because this is the ground point. You see how that works? We now have negative 3.4 volts on the grid relative to the cathode. And here it is. I added 4.7K resistor from the cathode to ground. And you can see here we're biased at around 73 volts that we wanted. And now we'll take a look at some waveforms again. Okay, so now we have the waveform up. Let me bring it up to 20 volts again. Close as I can get it. 20 volts. And now I'll move the scope probe from the output to the input and get a measurement. So now we're putting in 2.74 volts to get that 20 volts output. So you can see the gain has certainly dropped. Where is my calculator? So I'll punch in 20 divided by 2.74. Our gain is now 7.3. So that resistor has cost us some gain, but it should help in other ways. Uh, let's check distortion. Wait a minute, let me move the uh, go back to the output back to 20 volts distortion turn that off okay, let me bring the 1% pilot up to that first graticule so you can see now that our second harmonic is now at 3% and if you think back to the transistor amplifier you go well, didn't that knock the distortion down to like 0.25% with the transistor amplifier? Yes, it did, but the reason it did that is because the transistor had more gain to begin with. So it allowed the effect of negative feedback to work more strongly. In this case, we went down from, what was it, 13.8 down to 7 point something. So it's not going to reduce that distortion nearly as much. It gets into control theory and how negative feedback works, which is quite involved beyond the scope of this video. Now, if I would have started out with a tube that has a lot more gain, like a 12AX7, I would have seen this decrease a lot more, just like the transistor amplifier. So, no, it's nothing to do with tubes versus transistors. It's all about negative feedback, control theory, how this stuff works.
Okay, now let's turn this off, turn the signal back on. Uh, let's bring it back down. I had to turn it up to get that distortion notch at the right position for displaying it properly. So now I'll turn the supply voltage down. Same amount as I did before, but look at this. We only dropped about two tenths of a volt where the last time I think we dropped well over two volts. I'll bring it back up. So now having that resistor in there has isolated the circuit from the tube parameters, you know, the effects of changing power supply voltage, the gain of the tube, you know, somewhat the distortion from the tube. So hopefully that makes sense to you what's going on there. Now before I wrap this video up, I wanted to add a little side topic about bypassing this cathode resistor or in the case of a transistor emitter resistor with a capacitor. What's happening here? Well, it's going to pass DC just like it always has because, you know, capacitors block DC. So all of our DC parameters are going to remain the same. However, it's going to shunt AC signals right to ground. So we're not going to get that effect of negative feedback like we did before. Just like the other video with the transistor amplifier, when we put a signal on the input and the signal swings high, it made the transistor conduct more. Same is true with the tube circuit here. When that signal swings high, more current flows through the tube. When that happens, more current flows through the cathode resistor and there's a larger voltage drop. For this discussion, pretend the capacitor is not here because with the varying signal on the input, we want to have that signal vary on the cathode for, you know, for this discussion to work. So what happens, let's say we put a signal in there, it's swinging positive, causing more current. This goes up to 4 volts. That causes a negative 4 volt relative to the cathode on the grid. More negative voltage makes the tube conduct less. So it's actually countering our input signal, reducing the gain, and you know providing that negative feedback effect. So when we add the capacitor in the circuit, it shunts all the signal to ground as far as you know, the AC on the grid is concerned. So you'll just see that steady bias potential on the grid. You know, you won't see any varying voltage if you measured that. So the improved DC characteristics of this circuit by having that cathode resistor here is still in place. But we get back our gain by having that capacitor there. Of course, though, we do get that AC distortion back as well. So let me put a signal on the tube and connect the capacitor and you'll see how the signal increases significantly. The value you select for that bypass capacitor should allow the signals to be shunted through at the lowest frequency you select. The capacitive reactance has to be quite a bit less than that emitter, emitter resistor value. Okay, so now I'll connect the capacitor and look at that the amplitude shot way up so I have to turn this back down again so we get back the gain we lost by putting in the cathode resistor okay let's look at distortion and of course we gain back all the distortion too now you might be thinking our tubes no good for hi-fi because of that distortion well not at all with proper circuit design, you can get distortion down to very low levels. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching.